flat on your left. The earliest one, all right, in Lima City. More than a century old, more than a century old. Okay, but there is another one, Easter Lima. Across the Escanseco House, Easter Lima, another golf club, all right? So, it's just a reference for you. Wherever you go in Peru, you are gonna find an archeological remains. And do you know why? That is because the country that you're visiting, my dear travelers, is totally an archaeological destination. All right? Peru is totally an archaeological destination. But also we have other beautiful top destinations or attractions here to sh show you, to provide you extra experience in the conventional or non-conventional tourism. Some of you went to the jungle, other ones are going to the jungle. Amazon rainforest in Peru, the upper Amazon or the lower Amazon, the Andes and the sea level, tropical beaches as well by the north. Nazca lines, do you hear about the Nazca lines, some of you? Yes, enigmatic place, beautiful one. So desertic area, so huge lines that were created by the pre-Inca culture, which is called Nazca, 1200 years BC, BC, all right? Think it over, enigmatic place too. All right, good. So please, listen now. After this introduction, and before to pass the microphone to my partner, Michael Lish, I will let to tell you that just relax and enjoy the trip and enjoy your tour here in Lima. Good afternoon, welcome to Lima, welcome to Peru. My name is Fernando, your tour guide. And let me introduce our driver. He's, do you remember his name? No, he's Ricardo. No, he's our captain today in uh, this part of the traffic. Today is Sunday, and we have freeways in all part of Lima. Good, but mostly during the week we have a uh, horrible traffic. Good, but we will try to do the best in here in this part of Lima City. Good. At first, welcome, but uh, let me explain you part of my city. Lima City is a huge desert in front of the Pacific Ocean. Good. It's the only capital in all over South America in front of the ocean. That's the way Lima is super humid. As well, in all over Peru, we have just only two seasons. You are lucky, but for us in this moment is summer, but for us it's super warm. Good. The temperature in this moment, let me check it, is in Celsius degrees 23, 24. Good, it's mostly 76 Fahrenheit degrees. But yesterday we reached more than 37. Good, it was uh, near about 90 or 98. Good, but with 70 or 80 percent of humidity. So this is part of the El Nino influence that Miguel explained to you before. Good, the last year till this time also we suffered this part of phenomena and we will feel it extremely warm in this time but when you will visit Cusco the di difference is also you must notice immediately because, because Cusco is different Cusco is dry and also very cool at night yeah? this is completely different later Miguel will explain you what type of weather will be found in Cusco but at first Lima is warm in this moment yeah? you are now in uh, another district of Lima we are living in uh, San Isidro or San Isidro Way Hotel is located and we are now in Jesus Maria or Jesus Mary. This is the district that I'm living. Let me show you where I'm living. Good. My place of living, I never change it because I like it. All this mall that is on your left side, good, that recently was inaugurated a couple of years. I have churches, clinics, hospitals, schools, all the services in here. And let me show you my house. It's in a complex that recently the UNESCO is considered part of the patrimony of architecture all over South America because the complex was made by Japanese architects during the 60s and 1967 and they support all earthquakes and resist all earthquakes that Lima had for that period. Good. That's the reason all this complex you appreciated in there. This is the place I'm living. It supports very well earthquakes. 
Good. We have a very good complex in it with all the services that I explained to you. Good. I never change all my in all my life. I'm living on the eighth floor, but I was supported in there and I'm feeling twice the earthquakes. Good. In 1970, 1974. I have so many communications, you know, especially transportation, whatever. Good. That's my paradise as well. Mm -hmm. And summer is a very excellent place for living because you could be open all windows and it's very fresh. But in winter, it's a refrigerator yeah, because we're very close to the Pacific Ocean and the humidity is higher and higher. That's the way and it's a little bit controversy. Yeah. In summer, it's a paradise, but in the winter, it's a refrigerator. It's the only way. But it's a very special place for living. Apart of that, 10 millions of inhabitants, yeah, that's enough. That's enough. We have so many problems. A part of the places of living, for example, this is one solution. We have another complex in Lima. Now we have uh, water problems, uh, water supply problems, transportation, food, etc. Uh, very early, Miguel explained you, we have floods you know, or inundations. You know? It's raining for all part of Lima surroundings, but not in the same part of Lima. And Lima never rains. That's a phenomena. Imagine we have just only three millimeters of rainfall in a year. That is nothing. Good. So it rains a lot in all the surroundings of Lima. In the northern area and the southern area, but less in Lima downtown. Well, that's uh, very strange. Good. You are in the paradise. Because we have no thunders, no lightnings, no tornadoes, no rains, no nothing. Good. That's the way. And it's very strange. And look at this school on your right side. This is the Sacred Heart of Mary and it was a convent for the rich girls, Not especially till 1920. Just the ladies of the rich girls also live, live in this part of school just on weekends to visit the family. The rest of the week also they have been studying there. And we have so many universities in all the surroundings too. For example, the next one that we're going to pass through on in front of it, that on the left side, is the Pacific University. The specialist, the specialist are administration, business administration, and everybody told me that if somebody have a title from that university, immediately had a job in all over South America. Imagine how high rate you know, and range this university had in all over South America from Peru. It's a great success. Well, apart of that, let me explain you one thing that is very important for us, the culture, the history. Good. and also the mix of races we have here in Peru. So all Peruvians are mestizos as well. Good. Do you know what is mestizo? No? It's the first mix of people. You know, that also in Peru will be caused by Spaniards and Incas. You know? All Peruvians are mestizo all over the world. Everybody's mestizo. Good. For example, I explain you myself. My father family is coming from Italy. Good. I never took Italian. No, because my surname is Benalucci. Good? But uh, my grandparents also lived in the southern area of uh, the southern part of our beach in Lima. And they got married with black slave roots. Good? And the result is my father. I see my father is dark skin. But by my mother's side, good, a long time ago in the 19th century, the family comes from China, from Shanghai. Good? And they got married in the northern area with Spaniards' roots and Indians' roots, especially by Inca's roots. And the result is my mother. My mother have a round face, with Chinese eyes, a clear skin, clear skin. And the result is me, the United Nations. Okay? So imagine everybody in Peru, you have this kind of mix. That's the reason we have a very good phrase. Okay? If you have of Inga in your blood, you have of Mandinga, if not of Chininga. I think the Spanish said, if you have of Inca, you have of Mandinga, or the black slaves, or Chinese. Okay? So all these mix are Peruvians. Okay? Don't be surprised in all your journey. You will be seeing people that will be very different like us in Lima. In Cusco, it's the mix of labs, for example. Now everybody will be dark skinned with beautiful European characteristics, with blue or green eyes, curly hair, and blonded. Or perhaps on the contrary, white skin with all the mestizo characteristics, all the Incas characteristics. Yeah? This is the mix that we have in the colonial period that have been reproduced in 19th century with all the invasions that you have in all Latin America. This is the mestizo.
like it, like me. I'm very proud to be mestizo because we like it and we know it, a lot of history inside our bodies, inside our bloods. But the doctor suggests us, you must examine it and you must check it, the fifth generation inside your surnames because the original roots comes again into the family. Okay? The strongest families or the strongest roots are black people, Chinese and Indians. Perhaps another white people or white couple had got married and perhaps they had a baby completely black or Indian, perhaps, or perhaps completely blonded. But in, in all their families, they have seen any remains like that. So imagine how controversial what provinces we have. A part of that, look at on your right side, this is the first hospital that was inaugurated in the Social Security in Lima, in Lower Peru and South America in 1959. In that period, the hospitals had been separated by the attention of the people who would be attending in there. This is the employee hospital. We have another for workers. Okay? We have in here another problem with uh, the kind of uh, architecture. Look at uh, the other White House on the right side. This is the actual Museum of Art. Originally it was, was the exposition part because having exposed it in there, the new technology and the new invents in 1879. The most important is the inner structure because everything was made with forged iron by the same company who made the Eiffel Tower. Good. So that's the reason it's very, very important for us. Good. And uh, that statue that you appreciated at the monument in front is an owner who defend our territory in the frontier with Chile. We have a terrible war with Chile in 1879, the Pacific War. But uh, he protected part of the frontier with a ship. He destroyed Chilean ships, but the enemies had been floating in the ocean. He put on safe on the same Chilean and Peruvian harbors. And the Libyan lady said, was a crazy man, and everybody called him the gentleman of the ocean. When this rumor arrived to Lima, everybody said, what's the last gentleman? Because with the war, everybody dies. And he is over there, Miguel Grau. Yeah. In this boulevard, you can see another beautiful structure. Look at on the left, with all the mosaics, that are mosaics on the top, with all these figures. The little construction is the Italian Museum of Art was donated by Italians when we celebrated the centennial of our independence in 1921. The Sheraton Hotel, the highest tower we have in Lima downtown on the left, and the Real Plaza, this is a commercial center. All this area was the Lima's prison till 1970, because it was in front on your right to the Palace of Justice, or the Justice Palace. That is a copy of the Brussels Justice Palace that exists in Belgium, but on the top, where the Peruvian flag is located, we have a little problem. Instead of the Peruvian flag in Belgium, we have a tower and a dome. In here, the architect, they said, please, I need money for finished this construction. We had it. Okay, I left them abandoned the, the construction. And it's an unfinished construction, okay? for that reason, because we had not any money. Okay? And in front of you, the French palace. French for the style of art that is presented over there. But nowadays, it's partially empty. Just only the first and the second floor, that is just only busy by lawyer offices. But the rest is completely empty because nobody can pay the rent no, after the restoration. But now we are living part of the wide streets and we are in the main part of Lima.